Hello, I'm Citrus, and you're looking at the Master Grade Gundam GP-03S. Here is the One Year War RX-78 for size comparison. This kit was released in 2001 for 3,500 yen, and it's hard to say if that's a good price, because although you do get a lot of plastic, none of it is used very intelligently, even compared to other kits that came out around the same time and you can see it wobbling quite a lot as I rotate it around for you. There are two big reasons for this. One is the poly cap in the ankle, which isn't seated too well, so there's a little bit of jiggle, and you can see it has it on both sides. And this is despite the screw that you have to put into this joint, which doesn't make a lot of sense because most master grades at this time have screws in the knees. Speaking of the knees, they're only poly caps both on the top and bottom, and they wear out very quickly. This is not helped by the fact that the boosters on the back, although relatively hollow, are still quite weighty. In terms of construction and painting, every single one of these vents on the body has to be painted except for the ones in the side skirts and the ones in the legs. This is very odd because Bandai chose to put an underside piece on the side skirts and they could have done the same for the front, the back skirts, and even the shoulders, but they chose not to for some reason. The painting on the head is a bit difficult because the line that goes across the forehead is very poorly defined. And you can see that on mine, even to my best efforts, the paint has chipped slightly along the edge. Articulation on the whole is mediocre at best. You have a really tight hip socket here. Not too much of range in motion. The knee can come and do about a 135. The ankles only tilt so much. Very, very disappointing given the design of the joint inside. And you have a decent amount forwards and back, although you won't be able to make use of it very well because this joint in the toe here is not very stiff and neither is the joint here. Moving up, there is just a little bit of rotation in the waist rotation at the shoulder, no movement otherwise, and normal movement in the arm. The head only has one ball joint, and I highly recommend gluing the neck piece down into the chest because the plastic connection is very weak. As for gimmicks, you can open the pods on the back that store the beam sabers. You can open the red hatch to reveal the cockpit, which is very deep inside, and I've taken off the arm to show off the extension gimmick more easily. You also get a very large core fighter that you can fold into the core block that you can put inside the chest. It has its own opening cockpit. And to transform it, move the landing gear. And that's what the core fighter looks like inside of the Gundam. And here are the accessory gimmicks. You have the folding bazooka with a moving scope, the folding shield with extra ammo packs that you can take off and put on the beam rifle, and two different pairs of articulated hands, no separated fingers, for holding the accessories. They're not very easy to use, and they don't end up holding the accessories all that well, so it's not a surprise that these basically never showed up in Master Grades ever again. Here's the GP-03 holding its shield and beam saber, and despite my best efforts, this is the most exciting that I can make it look because the feet start lifting up if the legs go out any further. Let me start by apologizing for not being as enthused here as I was in the unboxing. I tried very hard to like this kit, especially since it was a gift from a very important person, but the build was just an agonizing experience. In short, the materials were terrible, the engineering was terrible, and all along the way I was battling 
Bandai's moronic decisions in designing this kit in the first place. You can read more details about it on my blog. And if you are a fan of this kit, I'm very sorry, don't read it. But for everybody else, it's a pretty good insight into just how it was like to build one of these old master grades. That said, this kit certainly doesn't speak for every other MG from 2001 because this was a lazy release even by the standards of the time. It was largely unchanged from the GP01, which came out all the way in 1997. So if that is any indication of what this kit is like today, then you should probably avoid it unless you are the biggest 0083 fan willing to dedicate a ton of time and energy into making this kit look even remotely presentable. So that's all for this review. I'm really sorry for anyone that I've disappointed with this because it just wasn't that great. There are way better kits you can spend 3,500 yen on. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.